Okay, this is part two. We got cut off. Part two of our 11th lecture. Psalm 130, verse 4. David says, there is, forgive, there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. The psalmist practically says to God, First thou must grant us remission of sins, after we shall begin to reverence thee, by walking in a new sanctified life. The term fear in this text does not signify merely awe in God's presence, but the whole work of sanctification. Psalm 119, verse 32, we read, I will run the way of thy commandments, when thou shalt enlarge my heart. First come the consolations of God, justification, the granting of pardon to the sinner, the remission of sins. After that, the psalmist expects to, quote, run the way of God's commandments, unquote. He means to say, because thou, O God, Receiveth me into thy grace, therefore, because of thy, this gracious act of, of thine, I conceive a love for thy commandments. As long as my sins are still unforgiven, I cannot love thee in thy commandments. No, I hate thee. But as soon as I have been pardoned, I have obtained a new heart, and gladly quit the world, for I find with the something better than the world can give me. The Apostle tells the Corinthians in his first letter to them, chapter 1, verse 30, Of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made us unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Beautiful. Here we have the true sequence. The first requisite to obtain wisdom, knowledge, and the way of salvation this is the primary step. Next comes righteousness, which we obtain by faith. Not until this has been attained comes sanctification. I must first know that God has forgiven my sins, that he has cast them into the depth of the sea before it affords me real joy to lead a sanctified life. Before that, it was a grievous burden to me. At first I was angry with God. I hated him for demanding so many things of me. I should have liked to cast him from his throne. I'm used in my heart. It would be better if there were no God. But when I have been pardoned and justified, I delighted not only in the gospel, but also in the law. John 15, verse 5, the Lord says to his disciples, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. That does not mean that we are to be physically incorporated in him, but that we believe in him with our whole heart. Put our confidence and trust in him and embrace him, holy with the arms of faith so that we live only in him, our Jesus, who has rescued us and, save, and saves us. When this takes place, we shall bear fruit. The Savior then shows that we must be justified before we can lead a sanctified life. If we become loose, severed branches, we wither and bear no fruit. In his address before the Apostles' Convention at Jerusalem, Peter, speaking of what God has done for the Gentiles, says, Acts 15, verse 9, He put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. After being justified by faith, I am also purified, renewed, and sanctified by the same faith. To confound justification and sanctification is one of the most horrid errors. Let me say that again. To confound justification and sanctification is one of the most horrid errors. The most beautiful preaching is rendered useless by this error. Only by a strict separation of justification and sanctification, a sinner is made to understand clearly and become certain that he has been received into grace by God in the knowledge.